We'll do it. I think it's. I think it should be like this because the surface is wide all the time, and I will show a lot of videos. Okay. Yeah. Have a little music while people are coming in. This is so nice. I would like to thank you for coming, and I would like to thank Soma for having me here and having um, housed me for the last two months. Um, I would like today to talk about my work, and I would like to show a lot of works also because it's so seldom, or I don't know when I will be in Mexico next time, so I would like to show a lot. I work mainly with video. I've recently come to think of my work as dealing with two different sets of questions. I first said that I would explain as dealing with questions dealing with power relations in society, um, questions dealing with the precariousness of modern urban living, um, and questions of fiction and reality. Questions of time, this and when I say time, I mean personal time, historical time, and time as format. What for me is interesting here is that all the context is taking out of this, the battle that the Black Panther stood for and the tools of power is left on the page. And Black Panther claimed their second amendment, their right to carry firearms, and they used this against the cops in a constant power battle. And another thing that I find very that I really like about this is that it's in this book, it is the cops and the pand pandas, the pigs and the pandas, whatever you want to call them, they all have guns. And now they are sort of equalized, these guns. So it's not, I, it's, it's hard to know when it's a police gun and when it's a panda gun. And this is the installation in Istanbul. And I think following Felix Gonzalez thread, I'd like to talk about a work that I produced here. It's called Patriotismo Invisible Hand. It's a photography. This work is a, this work is a poster work in endless copies. And I actually have a hundred of them here. The first batch, I would call it. And I would love for you to have one today. Living at Soma, I found it very curious to live squeezed in between Avenue Revolution and Avenue Patriotismo. And it kept haunting me somehow, these two sort of, or, or these very large spiritual words that somehow become something else. And I think, I actually can't remember now, but I'm pretty sure this is a Nissan shop on Avenue Patriotismo, and I think when I saw the word in these corporate letters, it made me think a lot about how Patriotismo is something that is also perhaps a spirit injected into people by certain capitalistic ventures. This is an installation uh, in a space where one screen is on that wall and one screen is on that wall. You will see a single channel version of it. And then people watching it on YouTube, developing this. And when I saw it for the first time, I thought, shit, I'm getting old. What, is, what the hell are they doing with their legs? Um, and it goes so fast. This is slow motion, right? It's the fastest dance you'll ever see. And it's very, it's also very German somehow. I don't know. Uh, but it's also why the, the, the kid was invited to make the music and why I also wanted somehow this energy to take control of my work and make put this music on top of a work that I would probably have made silent if I had made it by myself or if I had in, been in control of the sound. Because I like the idea that the, cinem that the cinematic can also create this distortion of our reality or this way of looking at our reality again. And these two works, 
um, is called the, I call them the Wasteland Series, and they are films produced in a public space and afterwards shown in that exact same space. The first one is called Wasteland Food Code. It was and this whole scenery is kind of destructed, but in an orderly fashion. Nothing is broken, everything is just disordered. And this cinematic display is created. The same night, the whole thing was rebuilt, so nothing had happened. And then the work was screened on a screen in the room that kind of resembled all other screens in this mall. So there's this idea of the food court having undergone this catastrophe of one of some sort. Um, and now as you sit and eat your, your burger, you're kind of puzzled about why is, um, what happened or why is it there. In, in my version of, uh, and these are the shots that haven't been filmed yet, these are the last scenes that we are filming now. In my version uh, of this story, South Paradise is working as a guy selling CDs in the metro. Um, here he is. He's the, he's the, the black little guy, right? Um, and he also has a job as a Rutulus painter, uh, where he paints commercials uh, along the highway. And in the end he, of the day, he falls asleep on the top of his car. And as he sleeps, and this happened yesterday, as he sleeps, he's dreaming of the song that he's selling in the metro, but it's performed by these kids. I'm not gonna show you a video of this, because um, uh, I haven't mixed the sound yet and, and edited it together. But as Sal Paradise is lying on his car, he, he dreams of these kids singing punk to him all night. It's a punk song that he's selling in the metro. And here is Sal Paradise lying on his car with uh, his mind blown by trumpets and drums and, and all the toil of, of, his, of his working day. And then it says, gracias, thank you. And I know I went over time, so uh, I, won't, uh, I won't be mad if there's no questions. <laughs> See, I'm not mad. <laughs> please, have a, please take a poster if you want to, and remember, you can also use the back side of it. Um, and also, I will leave the rest of the copies out in the lobby until there's none left. Thank you. Thank you.